Hi, everyone. I'm sorry. In my diversion of going back to multiplying by whole number, I forgot to do a division example. So I don't want to leave you hanging on that one. Um, I know that multiplication can be a bit to, to digest and you don't want to do certainly multiplication division on the same day, but I do want you to have some examples. So just like in multiplying, it's really important how we phrase it. So students understand what the question five, six divided by one third really means so that they have a sense of when I'm building something on the block, what am I looking for in the building? Like, what am I looking to to pull apart or to add together. So those will be important. So let, I'm gonna give, uh, we'll do two examples. Let's say I had five sixths divided by one third. So when we're doing division, have them build the very first part. This is five sixths of a whole. So can they show me five sixths? So we already know that it's gonna be the blue rhombus because I need six of those to make a whole, but it only wants five, right? That's all I'm building is five, six. So get your blues out. Okay, so I have five, six of the whole, which I can see there. So when it says divided by one third, what you're, it's asking them is how many thirds and we know what shape are the thirds for the pink, right? It's the black one, the chevron. How many thirds will fit into these five, six? That's what the question is asking them. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a chevron and I can see that I have one chevron right there. So one fits perfectly. I'm gonna grab another chevron because I can see another one fits perfectly. But now I have half the chevron left over because we didn't fill in this piece here. So how many thirds, how many chevrons would fit in here? We would have, I'll hold it in my hand, one, two and a half because only this side of the chevron is gonna fit over top of the blue. So one full, two full, and a half will fit over top of this. So my answer would be two and one half. All right, so always build the first one. And then how many of these can come out of here or fit into that? Now let's do it the algorithmic way because some of you might say, well, okay, never saw that before. Typically what we do in division is we say, we're gonna take the division sign and change it to multiplication and we invert and multiply. Now, some of you do it by common denominator. I, I totally recognize that as well. So when I, when I go ahead and I'm not gonna reduce anything, I'll just leave it the way it is. Five times three over six times one. So I get 15 over six. Now, could I have gone this into that? Yes, I will, and I'll do that in just a second. How many times does six go into 15 evenly? Twice. What's left over? Three. So two and three six is the same as two and one half. I'll grab a different colored pen for those who like to do the canceling first. So if I divide by three and I divide by three, I get two here. So this would be five times one two times one. So five over two is the same as two and one half. Sorry, that went off our screen a bit there. But I think division is something that's really hard for students to wrap their heads around at the best of times we belong with fractions. So it's helpful if they can do some building right there and have it reworded so it's not just the numbers, reworded so that they have a sense of what it is I'm trying to find. Okay, let's try one more. Let's try one quarter divided by one third. So let's build the quarter first. So here's our whole. We know that that is equal to one quarter. Okay. 
And now it says divided by a third. In other words, how many thirds are there in one quarter? Hmm. Well, maybe not enough, right? I'll just put it on the side for a second here so you can see it because it's definitely bigger than when we laid on top of here. It's just, just going to get blocked out. So really what I need to know is how much of that third is coming out of here. So what color do both of these have in common again? We did those before. So three triangles here, because that's all I have. I just have the one quarter. I don't have any more to, to make anything out of. This one would have four of them. So in comparison to my one third, how much of the one third is being used in that red? How much of the one third is in one quarter? Well, only one, two, three of the quarters are represented. So when I take one quarter divided by one third, in other words, how many thirds of the whole fit into this? not even a whole one, just three quarters of it fits in. Here's your three quarters. You can see it being built. I can lay it on top. Okay, I only cover three quarters of it when I'm talking about a quarter. So one quarter divided by one third is equal to three quarters. Now, if I do it algorithmic way, flip and multiply, one times three, four times one. So I hope it helps to give a little bit more meaning to dividing fractions and really what it looks like. It's the wording that I think we, we really need to make sure that we give the students a context of what that means and, and just let them work through those slowly. There is, there is no rush to get through div dividing fractions um, and certainly not when it comes to the understanding of it. I'd rather spend time doing the understanding piece and building until they get a sense of how to read this by themselves without us doing that. So then they can get a sense of whether or not their answer is even reasonably correct. All right, my apologies for missing the division one. So again, feel free to reach out if there's any questions that you have.